So you love your interest rate and you do not want to give it up anytime soon, but you still want a pool. You might even want an additional bedroom. We're going to show you how to keep your interest rates and also get you that pool you've always wanted and maybe that extra bedroom. Let's get started on the video right now. All right, so keeping your rate is hugely important as we always hear on this channel. Everyone loves our 2.75s. In Aaron's case, 2.25 because he's a veteran. So Aaron, all right, let's talk a little bit about this. If like, how does it work? As far as like, if someone wants to maybe put in a pool, someone wants to replace the gazette, like what does that look like? Sure, and you know, we, we get so many calls and, and questions about this in particular, because a lot of people, you know, there, you and I talk about this a lot, there are not a lot of move up buyers right now. You know, what, what we'd seen a lot in the past was because borrowing costs were, were much lower and home prices at the time were, were much lower, <laughs> A lot of people, when they wanted to make an upgrade, they bought a new house. But you know, if you're Bob with a 2.75% you know first mortgage, refinancing or I'm sorry, buying a new house at six or seven percent, that that doesn't make sense for most people. I mean, you're like doubling your your payment. Not to mention that homes cost more today than probably what it was when Bob bought his house, and so you you got that added to it as well. And so what a lot of people are deciding to do is basically, you know what, instead of moving, I'm going to fix this place up the way that I want it to be, whether it's adding a pool or, you know, whatever, adding square footage to the house, a bedroom, bathroom, whatever the case. And so the, the way that people are doing that without <clears throat> surrendering their ridiculously low first mortgage rate is they're taking out a second mortgage or a home equity line of credit. There's a, a few different, uh, you know, loan products that are out there. And depending on, you know, Bob's scenario, um, you know, uh, maybe a line of credit's gonna make more sense than a, there's a thing called a he loan, which is just basically like a fixed second mortgage. Um, but, it, you know, basically depending on what Bob's needs are, the scope of the project, all of that stuff, um, that's the way that he could tap into his equity and basically get the money needed to put in the pool or whatever the case is. And we've actually, we got somebody right now, we do eh, two to three of these a week. Um, they're, like I said, it's, this is a really popular thing right now. And so here's like one example is I think actually, cause I was out of town last week. Um, went up to took family up to Fort Bragg. It was beautiful. Little shell shock though, coming back from like 55 degrees to like 105 degrees. But uh, oh yeah, you, uh, I believe at the end of this last week, uh, we just closed a, a he loan for somebody in Placerville, and uh, you know uh, what she was doing basically is is she needed to make a whole bunch of repairs to the property. <laughs> Um, not just updates, but, you know, not just like, hey, I want to throw in a pool or whatever, but she had a lot of maintenance that she just hadn't, you know, kept up with and all that stuff kind of compounds over time. And so one of the really cool things about home equity lines of credit and also the second mortgages is that often we're able to uh, complete those without actually having a full appraisal completed. So you may or may not know this, but let's say that you've got a whole bunch of work going on at the property. You're in the middle of remodeling. You've already taken the sheetrock off of the walls. You're down to the frame, whatever the case is. You're, you're already involved in this project at this point. Most likely when a complete appraisal is done, the lender's not going to provide financing to you. Uh, they want to finance properties that are, you know, move in ready that are, you know, that are turnkey. They're not looking to finance a property that you have an active remodel going on um, or one that doesn't meet the minimum standards of like if, if you have just too much deferred maintenance going on. So like in, in uh, Lacey's uh, situation up in Placerville, what we were able to do for her is get her all the money that she needed to complete her project and everything. And uh, the appraisal was done online. It's like a AVM, just a automated, you know, system. And uh, that that way, the lender 
had no idea that all of this work needed to be completed and, and so forth. So there's there's a lot more flexibility when it comes to seconds and HELOCs uh, when it comes to the property valuations as compared to, to first mortgages. But seeing a lot of this, like I said, um, what uh, what what other what other questions you want to talk about? Appraisals. So how yeah. does that work as far as like, OK, let's say you're putting in a brand new pool and, you know, mm -hmm. a pool is going to be adding value to your house. How does that work with property taxes? How does that work with all that kind of stuff? Well, uh, so if you're having work done and it's work that requires a permit, right, which a pool, you're going to need to get a permit for, for a pool along, you know, if you're doing a kitchen or, it, you know, permits, uh, the, the codes and everything vary by city or county, you know, where the property is located. So you got to check the rules in your area. Um, but if a permit is required, one of the, the reasons that, you know, besides just collecting a fee and all of that stuff, uh, one of the reasons that they do that is that now they are going to reassess your property uh, potentially, especially if you add square footage or, or things like that. So that's something that, you know, it's going to be case by case based off of the rules for the, for the county and everything. Um, like, for instance, in Sacramento County, um, I was just looking at this a, a week ago, and uh, one of the, the things with Sacramento County is that if you are changing 50% or more of the property, like you're updating 50% or more of the property, or let's say that you know, you're knocking out walls, if you're going to remove 50% or more of the linear feet of walls, well, the county, they're not going to consider that a, a uh, remodel. They're going to consider that basically like new, new construction for all intensive purposes. And so, of course, one, they're going to charge much higher fees for the permits and all of that stuff. But also, you know, what's going to happen is it's going to trigger a property reassessment and, you okay. know, your, your taxes will, will go up. So you definitely you, you, you definitely need to factor that in. Um, and, you know, talk to the contractor about it. I would recommend you call the city or the county or whatever and just get it straight from the horse's mouth so that you know exactly what the implications would be, um, you know, by, by doing that. Because that's obviously one of your benefits in California. Um, you know, we don't have a lot besides great weather. But one of the bennies is, you know, we got Prop 13 still. And that locks in your property tax basis off of, you know, when you purchase the home, what that price was, and they can only make super tiny incremental increases every year. And that's part of how, you know, little, you know, grannies don't get kicked out of their homes they've been living in forever because not being able to afford their, their property taxes. So if you're going to make updates, it could uh, impact your property taxes. Now, the lender, they're not going to, you know, factor any of that stuff in. Um, okay. you know, so that's going to be something that, uh, you know, if, if you don't really think about it and you don't, you know, the contractor doesn't say anything to you, the loan officer doesn't mention anything to you, you could very well trigger these things and get a surprise, you know, reassessment. So make sure that you're, uh, you know, checking off all the boxes with that for sure. Um, okay. but to, to answer, you know, uh, the other part of your question, like how does the appraisal work? Um, it's, it's going to vary based off of what value you need in order to make your deal work. A real appraisal is always going to, well, most of the time is going to yield a higher value than an automated appraisal. Um, because the automated systems, just like Zillow and everything else out there, um, they're, they're just scraping data, public available data to determine what they feel is a is the value of the property and they've got their own you know everybody's got their own algorithm or whatever for that but an appraiser that's the the opinion of that appraisers like if you know you have amy parker on your show a lot right if amy goes out to a property and and she um you know says the property's worth you know five hundred thousand dollars that's because that is her opinion of value and part of how she arrived to that opinion is because she actually went to the property visually saw the condition of the property was able to see the upgrades all of that stuff that zillow or you know whatever website can't extract you know they don't know about those things 
So typically, if you need to max out the value on the on the valuation to get the best deal or to access enough equity, a full appraisal is going to be needed. Just keep in mind, like I mentioned earlier, if, if you got a whole bunch of work going on, you know, you're already remodeling, you already started the project, that's going to be problematic. You don't want a full appraisal because you don't want the appraiser to see that, take a picture and tell the lender, you know, hey, you, you knocked out all the walls already or whatever, right? Um, otherwise, you're just going to use an automated value system um, and each lender, you know, kind of there's a several third party vendors out there that provide these services. But it's it's similar to, you know, what you might find on my website or your website, Mark, where somebody, you know, they plug in, you know, their address and, you know, our, our computer program basically determines, you know, what the potential value is for the property. And then that would be what your loan is based off of. Now, something that's important to point out is that the valuation, if, if you're doing this because you want to improve your property, basically, you want to make updates, repairs, whatever the case is, this is not a renovation loan. And the reason I bring that up is that on a renovation loan, like people probably are familiar maybe with uh, the term FHA 203K, that's a popular loan program that's a renovation loan. That program, your loan and everything is based off of the value of the property after the work is done. It doesn't work that way with HELOCs and, and seconds and all that. But the, the 203k loan, Bob and most people that already own a house that have a two something percent rate, they're not going to want to do a renovation loan like a 203k loan because they're going to have to refinance into today's interest rates. The whole point of what you and I are talking about is how does Bob keep his two something percent rate tap into his equity and put in the pool or update the house or whatever the case is. And in order to do that, you got to stick with the path of, of going with like a HELOC or some sort of second mortgage, right? Okay. All right. Let me, let me, here, I got a few questions. Number one. Okay. Let's say you got about $400,000 of equity in the house, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say <clears throat> you want to pull out 200,000. You're going to do some major renovations to the house. You're like, hey, it's got a trigger appraisal. It is what it is. I'm good to go. Now, is that $200,000 um, going to be, it's going to be like, how does that get lumped into your old interest rate? Do you have to get a new interest rate on that money that you're taking out? Can it go towards renovations? Can it go towards anything? Is it just basically like, let's say you're hurting, job's not good. You need to pay off a couple mortgage payments. Like how does that, how, how does that work? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question. So uh, when you're taking out a, a second mortgage or a home equity line of credit, it is a second, a separate loan from your existing first mortgage. So that loan that Bob's got, you know, at 2.75% or whatever, that that doesn't, you know, factor into the monthly payment, the rate, all that stuff on the new loan. The new loan will take second position so it's, that's why we call it a second mortgage. And right. so it's either going to be a fixed second mortgage or a home equity line of credit, which tend to be variable and, and interest only. Um, and so the monthly payment um, is going to be based off of the interest rate for that second mortgage, which would be separate from the interest rate on, on the first mortgage. Um, so as, as far as that goes, I mean, the, the rates, just like other loans are going to be based off of, you know, how good is your credit and how much equity do you have, essentially, is kind of the, the two things that they're looking at. The more equity you have, the less risk you are, right? And the higher credit you have, the less risk you are. So you're going to get uh, lower interest rates, lower borrowing terms than you would if you had very little equity and, you know, challenge credit or whatever. But in general, that's that's how that would work. And then the cool thing about, you know, a, a line of credit or a second is you can do whatever you want with the money. Um, I'm not suggesting this because this would be stupid, but I mean, you could literally take your money out and go to Las Vegas and bet it all on black if you wanted to. That would be a terrible decision. Red would probably. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, you uh, you you can do whatever you want with it. Um, obviously, you know, you should make smart decisions with with what you're doing with your equity and everything. Most people that are tapping into their equity, they're either utilizing that equity to do home improvements or to, you know, renovations, whatever the case, repairs, 
because it's a lot cheaper to uh, do that type of financing than it would be to like go on, you know, uh, Lightstream or SoFi or something and take out like a personal loan. Those those loans are going to have really high interest rates and shorter terms, whereas a real estate loan, you're going to have lower rates, longer payback terms, which makes it easier to afford doing that stuff. Um, the other thing that that most people are doing with their equity is paying off debt. Um, you know, a lot of people have racked up a lot of debt and, you know, you're a lot of people are paying 20 to up to like, I think, 28 percent on credit cards and personal loans and all of that stuff. And so by consolidating all that high interest debt into one loan, a lot of people are able to save a ton of money. Like we did one for a lady last month. She saved $1,700 a month by basically consolidating a bunch of those, you know, like it was Lightstream and SoFi and a car payment and all this really like just high interest consumer debt into, uh, you know, just a more affordable payment. And some people even do a little bit of both where they're like, all right, I need 35 grand to, uh, to update the house or to, you know, to do whatever projects I want around the property. And I also have $75,000 in consumer debt that I need to consolidate, throw it all into one deal and, you know, work it that way. But there's, there's a lot of options to tap into your existing equity without touching the first mortgage rate, which is a big fear that everybody has is that they basically, they got to, mm. they got to lose the super sweet loan that they've got on their, on their mortgage right now, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing. We'll get, but hitting you back again, okay, with today's rates, we're around 7% here and there. If Bob mm -hmm. was taking out $200,000 and he had good credit, all that kind of fun stuff, would you think he'd hover somewhere around the 7%? Uh, no, he, uh, on a, you mean on a, like a line of credit or a second yep. mortgage? No, he's going to mm -hmm. be probably closer to nine or 10% somewhere in that range. The way yeah. the, the second loans, uh, typically are priced out is they're based off of what is called prime, uh, the prime rate, which prime rate is just basically like the layman's term would be like the rate that banks offer their best customers or whatever. But Really, that rate is is one of the rates that moves every time the Federal Reserve lowers or raises interest rates. So like a lot of people that had an existing home equity line of credit, for instance, which is an adjustable uh, rate, when the Fed started raising rates, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, those, those HELOC rates went up with the Fed or this year as you know who knows what will really happen because they keep moving the goalposts. but at some point you know they're gonna they, they say at least they're gonna start lowering rates right and so if you have a heloc right now and they lower rates by a quarter point your heloc rate's gonna go down by a quarter point so basically what what banks do is they they add a little bit of margin on top of the fed funds rate and that's how they, you know, they, they make money off of those loans. But in general, I would say you're going to be somewhere in that like nine to, to 10 percent uh, range. But we've also we did one for uh, a, a mutual client of ours, Mark, that bought a sweet, <clears throat> sweet skyline house up in uh, in Rockland. And we, we did a, a, a he loan for them, which is like a second mortgage versus a, a, a home equity line of credit. And because of their really great credit and they just had a, a, a ton of equity, um, we were able to get them like a seven, I think it was a 7.124 or something like that on a 20 year fixed second mortgage. So um, you can get some really competitive interest rates on these things, especially of course, if you got good credit, you got equity, obviously that always helps, right? Okay, so I'm gonna pivot on this one. <clears throat> yeah. Something we hadn't even talked about before the video. A lot of investors or a lot of people who like buy houses, like let's say they have like, you know, a lot of people are saying like, you know, keeping equity in your house, if you got like 50% of your house paid off with, like what are you doing keeping it in the house? Take mm -hmm. out some money, buy an investment property. Take out some money, buy yeah. an investment property. What do you think about that idea? Like it's like, let's say you're saying to yourself, look, 
that's cool. Money's in my house, everything. But like I'm looking and I want to grow my portfolio. I saw a great deal over there. I'm going to take out some money. I'm going to, you know, take out some money from the house, take out some of the equity, and I'm going to invest in my first investment property. Do you see flaws in that? Because this is what everyone's talking about. The idea like if you keep all the all the money in your house, then you're just letting it sit there. What are you doing? You should use it. You should buy yeah. more, buy more, buy more. What do you think of that? I agree with it, honestly. I For a long time, I subscribed to the Dave Ramsey school of thought. Pay all your stuff off, be out of debt, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. If, if you've got half a million dollars in equity, I mean, it only does you any good in, when you actually realize that, that gain of equity. The meaning like you've cashed it out, you've sold your property or you've, you've refinanced. Otherwise, it's just like it's, it's an imaginary thing basically that's just sitting in your your you know the ether of your home somewhere and although your home's value will continue to go up assuming that you know the, the things keep going the way they have for like the last 80 years tapping you know pulling the equity out of your home does not stop the home price appreciation train your home would continue to appreciate <clears throat> so in fact, one of the things that I regret doing, Mark, is when I refinanced into that 2.25% rate, uh, I should have done a 100% cash out refinance at 2.25%. That would have been like the deal of the century. Instead, I was a dummy. And, uh, you know, I I'd basically, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to pay my house off, you know, as soon as possible and all that stuff. And uh, if, if you do the math, and you look at what you could do with the additional money um, in terms of like, you know, if you had access to half a million dollars in capital, what, what could that money potentially do? Um, it's, it's very, you know, eye opening. Um, but for one, I'm not giving anybody investment advice. You should go, you know, seek out your own counsel, seek out, you know, professionals for 100%. all that and do what makes the most sense for you. I would say that the biggest problem is that most people, they, they get in over their heads. They don't basically make good decisions when it comes to their investments or whatever the case is. And so like, if you're, you know, uh, let's say you had a bunch of equity in your home and you pull that equity out and then you go lose all that money, you know, trading, you know, game stock, uh, game stop, uh, you know, options, you know, thinking that you're going to be smarter than the market or whatever the case is. And then, you know, you lose all that money or whatever. Well, obviously <coughs> that would be a terrible, terrible decision, right? So, you know, you got to be smart with what you do with the money, but the argument, in my opinion, can definitely be made that if you're going to put that equity to use elsewhere to where you're growing that that money, um, as long as you're doing it, you know, in a you know smart, responsible way, I think that's that's the smart money move. Um, in fact, like if if when one of these days, I mean, you know, just like most people, I I would love to move and upgrade my house and all that, but I got to super sweet interest rate and a low mortgage payment and all that stuff. And every time I, I look at, you know, a, a potential property, I, I, I just haven't found anything. I've been excited enough to be willing to pay three or four times what I pay per month. But whenever that time comes, um, I'm doing a hundred percent financing. I'm not going to go put like a, you know, big giant down payment. I'm going to take my, my earnings off of the property and I'm going to go reinvest them elsewhere because I personally believe that I can make way more money off of my my money versus just having it sit in my equity, you know, to be inherited one day or to be used as a down payment one day or whatever, which is what happens with most people's equity is it just sits there forever. All right. I like it. I like it. All right, guys. Well, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If you're looking to like, you know, keep your interest rate, if you're looking to maybe put in a pool, maybe do some maintenance, maybe get ready to sell even, um, mm -hmm. this is a great way to go. Reach out to Aaron at New A Mortgage as always. Um, he's got a fantastic YouTube channel as well too. All his information is below. Aaron, any parting words? 
Hey, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next week. Okay, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you love your interest rate, but you still want that pool or extra bedroom, this could be the perfect solution for you. Now, again, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content regarding the Sacramento real estate market. And if you're looking to make the move or you're looking to sell your house, reach out to my team. We'd love to work with you, talk to you a little bit about what that entails. Um, remember, guys, this is Mark. Time your life. Do not time the market. And if you want to see more content, here's a video right for you over here. And here's a playlist right for you over here. And please, again, guys, do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, guys, this is Mark. Have a good one.